How far can electric cars really travel on a full charge when it's cold? We've got 12 EVs here today, and that is what we're going to find out. But before we reveal our results, if you want to see lots more new car features and reviews, make sure you subscribe to our channel and go to whatcar.com for a great deal on your next car. So we carry out these range tests twice a year, at the height of summer and in the depths of winter, to see how far electric cars can really go on a full charge and how efficiently they use the electricity stored in their batteries. Just like in our previous tests, as much as we'd like to do this on the public road, things like traffic lights, cyclists and roundabouts would mean it would be impossible to keep 12 cars together in convoy. So they wouldn't be driving in exactly the same conditions, making the test unfair. And then of course, there's the safety side of things as well, because deliberately running out of juice with other road users around could be pretty dangerous. That's why we always use our private proving ground in Bedfordshire. We follow a relatively simple test route of around 15 miles, which includes 2.6 miles of simulated stop-start urban driving, 4 miles at a steady 50 miles an hour, and 8 miles at a constant 70 miles an hour. The reason for the high percentage of high-speed cruising is that drivers who want to travel long distances in one hit are likely to be using the motorway. The first step was to fully charge the 12 cars we had and then leave them out in the open overnight. This was for roughly 14 hours between 0 and 2 degrees centigrade ambient temperatures. Early the following morning, all 12 were plugged back in again to check they were fully charged. Now it's important for this test, of course, to make it fair. And to do that, we're driving all of these electric cars at the same time, in the same conditions, and we're setting them up all the same as well. So that means if there are a choice of drive modes, then we are allowing them to be put in eco mode. The regenerative braking is gonna be left in its default setting. And unfortunately, despite the temptation, we are not allowing heated seats or heated steering wheels. Our original plan was to set the air conditioning in all 12 cars to 21 degrees, but during preparation the day before testing, we noticed that the MG's interior felt quite a bit chillier than it was claiming. So we used a digital thermometer to see what the actual temperature was in each car. The Jaguar I-Pace was used as our benchmark, setting its climate control system to 21 degrees and leaving the doors closed for 20 minutes to allow the interior temperature to stabilise. During this time, we measured the temperature at roughly the chest height of the driver and we recorded 19.5 degrees. So we set about the lengthy task of matching this in our other 11 contenders. And for the record, it was only the Renault Megane which was able to achieve this temperature with the climate system set to 19.5 degrees. The Aura Funky Cat needed its aircon dialed up to 22 degrees, while the MG4 required its interior temperature set to 23 degrees. The reason this matters is that heating an EV's interior uses up precious battery power that could otherwise be used to get the car further down the road. So, to make things as fair as possible while providing a reasonably warm and consistent environment for the driver, it was important to normalise things as much as possible. The actual temperature outside was between 3 and 6 degrees during our testing, and it was a cloudy day. So the interior heaters were running continuously. And yes, before our viewers from Alaska explained that 3 degrees isn't cold, it's pretty cold for Britain, and still gives us a good indication of real-world winter conditions for cars in this country. And so to our results. Unsurprisingly, it was the car with the smallest battery that ground to a halt first. The Mini Electric managed just 113 miles, so any long journey will inevitably involve frequent charging pit stops and high levels of range anxiety. More positively, the Mini was the most efficient car in our entire lineup, averaging an impressive 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour. So, as an urban and suburban runaround, particularly for multi car households, it can still make sense. The new Aura Funky Cat should have a broader appeal. It has more space in the back, costs about the same to buy, and it promises an extra 52 miles from every full battery charge. Sadly, in our real-world test, it beat the Mini by only 17 miles, and it posted the third worst efficiency figure of all 12 cars at 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour. Something that's particularly disappointing given its relatively small size. 
the Funky Cat also fell further short of its official WLTP range. The next 50 miles went by without any further dropouts before the field began to rapidly whittle itself down. Next to die was the Cupra Born at 182 miles. This was a car we tested back in the summer when the temperature was between 24 and 29 degrees. Back then, it managed 219 miles, showing that cold temperatures really do make a difference to range. In this case, the Bourne's range was more than 20% worse in cold weather. For this test, we included two Renault Megans, one with 20-inch alloys and one with 18-inch alloys. Our theory, and indeed the common perception, was that the bigger your alloys, the worse your range will be. But surprisingly, it was the Megane on the smaller alloys which ran out first. But the difference was only two miles, and this doesn't mean bigger wheels won't impact range on other makes and models. The family-friendly Volkswagen ID Buzz dropped out of the running at a respectable 192 miles next. This was the second most energy-hungry car in the lineup, with an average efficiency of 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour. The fact it has such an enormous interior to heat probably didn't help its cause. But while this doesn't have the longest range out there in cold weather, the Buzz is still a fantastic electric car. And to find out what makes it so great, click on the link to watch our full review. The range-topping long-range version of the MG4 dropped out four miles later, on 196 miles. That's pretty far from its official 270-mile range, but this is one of the cheapest options here. So, while it's not a perfect electric car, for the money, the MG4 is very impressive indeed. Just one mile later, it was the Jaguar I-Pace that died. The Jag was the least efficient of the dozen, returning just 2.3 miles per kilowatt hour. While the tall and boxy Buzz has a good excuse for its relative inefficiency, the I-Pace really doesn't, and would likely cost the most to run in electricity compared to all the other cars in this test. The final four weren't even breaking a sweat at this point, and all went past 250 miles. But the Genesis GV60 finally died at 251 miles. 10 miles later, the BMW i4 gave up the ghost on 261 miles. This i4 had 19-inch alloys, while in our summer test, we had an i4 on 20-inch alloys. This time around, the i4 suffered a dead battery 56 miles earlier than it did in the summer, despite having smaller wheels for our winter test, which, on paper, should improve efficiency. Although, as proven by the Megans, that isn't always the case. Curiously, the Nissan Ariya went into limp mode at around 250 miles, but it just kept on going. The performance deteriorated pretty drastically, but it didn't actually stop dead until it had traveled 269 miles in total. That helped it get closest to its official WLTP range. It fell just 16.4% short. But that still wasn't quite enough to beat the mighty Tesla Model Y. The long-range version of Britain's best-selling EV managed a hugely impressive 272 miles. Other than the much lighter Mini Electric, it was also the most efficient car in the lineup, averaging 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour. Plus, the Model Y ran out of juice just 32 miles earlier than the same version did in our warm weather test. So those are our full results, but the final question to ask is, how accurate are efficiency meters? With energy prices at an all-time high, how efficiently EVs use the electricity stored in their batteries is under the spotlight like never before. All electric cars have built-in meters to help you monitor this, usually displayed in either miles per kilowatt hour or watt hours per mile. It's the equivalent of a fuel-powered car showing you how many miles per gallon it's achieving. Should these meters be relied upon though? Well, our tests show that the answer is, it depends. Some were spot on while others either overread or underread by a fair margin. The Funky Cat promised 15% better efficiency than it was actually delivering, while the Cupra and GV60 also overpromised. The Mini, on the other hand, claimed 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour, which is an efficiency figure that would have still made it the most frugal user of electricity here. But our calculations showed it was actually delivering fractionally under 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour. 
So there you have it. Are you surprised, shocked by these results? Tell us in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video, it would be great if you gave it a like. If you want to see lots more new car reviews and features, subscribe to our channel. And for a great deal on your next car, go to whatcar.com.